Uh, all right, let's jump back in uh, to the area of hospitality. So we've talked th- through the parking lot team, the door holder team, greeter team, uh, and now let's get into hospitality. So walk me through what this person looks like, Adam. Yeah, so a lot of churches already have this player in place. Uh, you know, somebody who's making coffee, who's making sure there's enough creamer, who's making sure the sugar's stocked. Uh, you know, some churches do donuts or some churches put out mints or whatever that looks like. Donuts but, are much better church. I mean, let's <laughs> you just know say. it. You know it. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so, but I, I think it's important. And, and one of the things Kenton and I really wanted to to put together was they are a member of the first impressions team. So the reality is that everything communicates, uh, every step of the puzzle, every piece of the puzzle communicates. So, you know, the quality of coffee you use, whether or not it's burnt, whether or not it's made on time, whether or not somebody has to wait to pour it, uh, whether or not you run out, you know, right before that person gets to your church, um, how sloppy is the sugar put out? Is it in packets? Is it like, you know, in an old bowl that looks like it's held sugar for the last 200 years. So the the question really is, what is this communicating? And what does that mean for the first impression that we're creating? So the hospitality team is, um, or the hospitality position on that first impressions team is really yeah. there to discover opportunities to make guests feel comfortable. Um, you know, and, and that's really their why. So we're circling back to, you know, is the is the carpet rolled up in the corner or the, the welcome mat? Is it rolled up in the corner or is it flat? Is there enough supplies in the restroom? Uh, are the restrooms clean? If somebody dropped a napkin, did you pick it up for them? So the, the hospitality team is really there to go after those details. And that's kind of the perfect person for this position is really detail oriented, somebody who's a self-starter, but somebody who also is going to buy into the why of what they're doing. You know, we're not here just to make sure that the coffee's stocked or that there's enough creamer. We really are creating a comfortable atmosphere so people can tear down those you know, negative stereotypes or negative ideals or, or really open up and feel more comfortable to hear the message once they get into service. So, uh, Kenton, Adam hit on this a little bit, but uh, let's get into the why of the hospi- this hospitality player. What is the hospitality team's why? It is to make sure they, like Adam hit on, comfortable. Make sure everybody feels comfortable. They're in a new place. They're not sure what's going to happen. They haven't made it into the sanctuary yet. Right. So they don't know what's behind the doors, what to expect, that kind of thing. You're playing host. You're, you're basically asking them, hey, you know, can I get you anything? Is there anything I can help you with? You're you're cleaning up the counter as people have poured coffee and made a little bit of mess. You're, you're making sure you're the look and the feel of how it was already presented. Right. There's somebody that comes in before the hospitality team before the first impressions team that has purchased and made the look of what you're going for right is it a young looking you know this magnolia you know look with chip and jojo you know over there with the wood counters and all the coffee and everything like that that's your look and feel you're wanting to keep that area clean simple and comfortable right um so the whole time it's just making sure that's over there clean making sure it's stocked and fresh i played this role yesterday at church actually and it was exhausting. I hadn't been there doing that in a while. I've done more greeting and doors and all that stuff. And yesterday was my day to do uh, this role. And it was just filling up coffee pots over and over and over and over again. Uh, and cleaning up the mess and going into the restroom to make sure there was more toilet paper. I mean, it was just, it was nonstop moving around. Now, some churches are going to have different teams that are going to make sure like, you know, some of those areas are designated for janitorial stuff and things like that. But for our church size, that's our role. That's our responsibility. And we want to make sure everybody has what they need when they come in, that there's, you know, tissue boxes. If it's, you know, if it's a day where it's going to be rough, like the Holy Spirit's going to be impacting you today, we want to make sure those tissue boxes are filled up and ready to go on each aisle inside the sanctuary. Same thing with outside. You know, people are going to come out um, during the worship service and kind of get a breather sometimes, right? We want to make sure they have what they need in that environment, in that setting and make sure it looks right. So just cleaning up from what other things have been left and making sure that 
while we've done our task, we keep our eyes focused on the people around, right? So we're, we're playing kind of two roles and we're looking for people and, and just saying, hey, is there anything else I can help you with? I'm getting some new coffee out. Do you need anything else? Stuff like that. Most people are going to say no, but there might be somebody that, that asks about a specific sugar or a specific type of creamer, you know, and we may not have it, but that's a good thing to go, okay, hey, that's something we can stock and ask for inventory on down yep. the road, you know, things like that. So, Okay, so before we get into the last role of team captain, uh, I want to hit on this and that with any of these smaller teams, with any of these these players, uh, I think one key that that I've seen is sometimes people from the team will huddle up together, will click up together. You, I'll see them on their cell phone, uh, you know, playing around. I'm like, D- dude, you just missed like four families that walked in. Like you, there's opportunities missed. Uh, so what, Adam? Maybe you can speak to this. What are some ways that we can encourage our teams to not be a click when we're serving? I think it really, and, and I'm going to throw this back to Kenton. Because I think it really comes down to the why. You know, if they really understand the impact they're having uh, on a a new family, this could be somebody's Sunday. Uh, I have a very good friend. He's been been saved for uh, 22 years. And the day he came to church, he told God, I will give you one Sunday to change my life, and I'm never coming back. And that Sunday he got saved. You, you really have to take the, the opportunity to say, you know, who am I impacting this Sunday? What could it mean for that family? Like, this could be the sixth church that a family has visited when they visit your church. And they might be saying, this is it, this or nothing. And, um, but Kenton's going to say it way better than I can, because he's so good <laughs> at helping teams articulate their why. Well, well so it, it comes back to the vision, the why. Right. So that team captain is going to have that heart and it's going to communicate every Sunday morning the reason why we're doing this. So when you get your group together and you're praying over your Sunday and and what's about to happen. And then when you're designating your roles to each person, you're reminding them each time like, hey, remember, try not to get stuck. I know this is like because we we rotate ours in every two weeks to every three weeks because that week that you're serving, it's a week where. You're not going to catch up with your friends. You're not going to really be in for worship. Like, I'm hungry to worship inside, and and I want to experience that. But this Sunday, I'm not going to make it in during worship because the visitors come really early or they come late because they don't want to come in the middle and be around everybody necessarily, right? Like, you're going to have a little bit of everything, but a lot of times you're going to see the people come in just to try to kind of bypass everybody to get in and kind of check out who you are, right? So we stay late for greeting and we come early also. But the biggest heart of the why is to make a difference and to show them, communicate who we are and why we're doing this. So this Sunday, you know, this yesterday, I've got friends coming by. They know I might talk to them for about three seconds. And in the moment I see a new face, I'm out. And I'm, and I'm turning and I'm communicating and talking to them. And I've done this for so many years. They understand that I'm not ignoring them and I, I don't care about them. I'm up. You know, I have my T-shirt on. I'm, I'm on call and I've got to move, you know, right. and I, my heart, they're here. They know my heart so that we'll, right. we'll catch up after church is over. But right now it's all you. And so I don't right. I don't remember the last time I've seen anybody on our team have a phone out. Like, I don't think mm-hmm. we don't do phones because we don't. We don't want to be distracted. We want all distraction gone. We want all eyes, all attention, looking up, smiling, and focused on who they are when they're coming in. So we can figure out by their look, do they look stressed? Do they need to know where to go? What, you know, what's going on uh, with this family, with this person, with this individual? How can I help serve them, you know, this Sunday and connect them, you know, one way or the other? All right, let's, uh, you kind of leaned into this, but let's talk about the team captain role. Um, w- and we've hit on this along the way too, but why is this position of team captain so important? Adam, you want to kick us off? Yeah. I mean, the team captain is there to build a team that understands and executes the why. So they are all about, you know, Kenton in a nutshell, you know, if we could bottle up Kenton <laughs> and help our teams understand their why 
over and over and over and over and over and never get sick of we're motivated by our why. And, um, you know, the, the team captains that have been at it for a long time and have successful teams from, you know, the people we've talked to are, are the team captains who are still okay with repeating the why. So we're going to have a huddle up before uh, we, we break up into our sub teams or we're going to have a huddle up before any other guests show up and we're going to talk about the why. Not just to be redundant for the existing team members, but also for all of the new team members that come on. You know, why are we here? Let's refocus. Let's remind ourselves. Um, and that's that's really what it boils down to. Yes, there are things we need to address. Yes, there are decisions the team captain has to make. Um, and at the end of the day, that team captain has to motivate the team through their why. Agreed. Kitten, you want to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. So team captain, <clears throat> they're going to know everything that's going on for that Sunday. If it's different from any of the other Sundays, it's like Easter service, Christmas service, we're having a baptism bash this Sunday, whatever it may be, um, dedicating babies, you know, like they're going to understand what's going on. And then they're going to be the friendly reminder this week of, Hey, we're going to have a lot of new families coming from other churches that are coming to support their grandkids or, or whatever this week. Hey, let's make sure we focus them and get them to this designated area where they can get their gift and whatever. But we're we're communicating that. And every single week, we are communicating the why. Why are we doing this? It's the same thing as why do we go into worship? We get we're we're reminded every single Sunday of the reason why, the heart of Jesus. And so that's it's not redundant because we're used to that as believers coming yeah. in every Sunday, right? Yeah. That's why we get up and we go to fellowship with our friends, our family to do it. So just re-communicating that every single week is so important so they can just remember and remember and remember, okay, this is the heart. Today, somebody's life could be changed. Somebody's life. Somebody's life. We may not see that, you know, until we're up at the banqueting table, but there's there's a reason why we do it, and that's why we want to connect them yeah. to the body of Christ. So I'm a big fan of checklists. Oh yeah, uh, especially when it comes to our teams. Uh, so Adam, walk me through a pre-service checklist for uh, the first impressions team. Yeah, so we've built this right into the ebook. So literally, once you somebody downloads the ebook, they can print off. Uh, their checklist and and go ahead and use it this week. It's also copy and paste. So we know we we're never going to create a checklist that was going to serve every single church perfectly. So you can copy and paste it into like a, a Word document or an email and add or change things that, that need to be there to suit your church. But basically it walks you through, you know, what is the parking lot pre-service checklist? So has the parking lot team members arrived? Yes or no? You know, you have a checkbox. Have they walked through to pick up any garbage or debris? Have they cleaned off the sidewalks of branches or snow or dirt? And then the door holding team members, have they arrived? Have they Are the doors fingerprint free? Are the mats in the proper position? All those kinds of things. So we created this checklist for like, as you're the team captain, just double checking that the team players have, have finished what they need to do to get service ready. And then there's a team meeting checklist. So we go through things like, does anybody on your team have something they need prayer for? Or um, are we going to pray for the people who are coming for the first time? Are there any announcements for your team, like upcoming meetings, changes to team function, dates? Is everything functioning as usual? You know, Is there a door that's stuck or a window that's broken or a driveway that's blocked for some reason? Then you remind your team about the why, and then you ask uh, if any team members have any questions. So that checklist is built right into the ebook and uh, really easy to use. And it also means that if you're having a, a sick day or, like, heaven forbid, you took a vacation, then as the team captain, you could pass on this checklist to somebody else who can go ahead and execute the first time every time. Cool. cool. <clears throat> All right. So let, let's wrap our discussion up. So... Um, Kitten, uh, maybe there's someone that's uh, listening and watching this that's like, yeah, I'd love to have that many people serve on my first impressions team. All those players sound awesome, but we are a really super small church, or I have no idea how to get started. Uh, what would you suggest to them? 
Uh, first, <clears throat> I would get buy-in. I think every church, there's a reason why you have members. They, they have a heart to be there, right? So from the, from the top down, find that person who can lead this group that has a heart to make sure that people feel connected um, when they're coming in. My focus isn't to grow the church. I'm not there to, to focus in on growing the church. I'm there to focus in on making sure when they walk in, they feel the love and the presence, right? So from a small church perspective, you want to grab that person who can help create, um, show the vision of your church, what what you're about, the hope, you know, what your passion is in your community, what that is. You want to grab that person, make sure they can designate and raise up, you know, a few people. If it's a, if it's a brand new church plant, and you got 50 people, you know, if you can get five to six people, your building is not going to be that big to where you need a lot of greeters and, and people to move around. You probably need five people on a Sunday to do it. That means, though, for your first few months, they're going to they're going to have to keep doing it right. Yeah. They're going to have to keep rotating and keep doing it. But with buy in, you can do it. Right. Yeah. There, there's a reason why we show up every Sunday and there's a reason why it's it's you know, it's corporate. It's together because, you know, after church Sunday, you're still going to get to go connect with your friends. You're still going to get to pray with them during the week. You're still going to get to worship, you know, throughout the week as well. You're just going to miss that that Sunday morning experience that you're trying to create for others as well. Right. When it gets to the bigger church, you, you've got to you, you've got to have these things pressed in way more. You've really got to have this checklist going and you really got to spend time training them up. Right. Yeah. Like you you have to teach them. I mean, even from the standpoint of like, if it's a church plant, you need to teach them how to set up the tools, right, to use from outside to inside. So if you're using, you know, products that we have or other people's products, you you need to teach them how does it set up? How does it tear down? How do, how do we take good care of the stuff that we have to set up from the equipment, from the soundstage, whatever, helping, and then getting ready. Like, we're not exhausted from all that work and effort that we just went out and put, you know, tin feathers outside in the snow or whatever and came back in and cleaned the driveway and got it ready. You might need to bring an extra shirt, right? Like Sunday morning, you're going to be there an hour and a half and you, that's part of it. But you got to, you got to create that buy-in so your team understands that's, yeah. that's what we're doing, right? Good. And then there, give them that checklist and then hitting it out of the park every time those people come in with a smile. Good. All right, Adam. Let's uh, let's wrap it up. How can we get the the ebook, and how can we continue and and learn more through the book? Yeah, the ebook is available for free on the Church Banners blog. It's firstimpressions.churchbanners.com, and uh, there's a button at the top that says free ebook. It's called Huddle Up: uh, The Five Players on Your First Impressions Team, and that is the best way to get it. You can also connect with uh, the Church Banners Facebook page, where we talk a lot about that ebook and we post about it regularly there. Um, and we would really, really, really love to hear back uh, any questions about the ebook and and really the difference it's made for your church. Awesome, man! And we'll link over to uh, all those links in the in the show notes for you guys. So, um, well, guys, as we wrap, uh, any words of wisdom as we go? You got it. They have it. The church is, it's exploding and Jesus is ready and don't feel overwhelmed if you don't have it going. You, you, church, you're doing great. So keep, keep going. Good. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate the insight and all the information that you share through the book and, and with what you guys are doing. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Carl.